Hey everybody, welcome back to the Liam Photography Channel. This is part two in my Arsenal 2 review. And I'm out here at beautiful Mayo Lake. It's in the background behind me. And today we're going to test the Arsenal 2's ability to do long exposure photography without ND filters. Now they claim they can do this by taking stacked photographs. Um, to, so you take a bunch of photographs stacked and it'll create a long exposure without the need for ND filters. So I figured I'd do it here at the lake to see if it can give me the same smooth glass effect to the surface of the water that you would get doing a, a traditional daytime long exposure with a neutral density filter. So we're going to give that a try and see how it works out. Okay, so here we are at Mayo Lake and I have my Arsenal app up here and we're going to try to do a long exposure. Now if we go into the settings, it's under here under one of the stacked modes. So you select it here and then you can select the number of shots that you want to take from a minimum all the way up to a maximum of 30. I'm going to try 12 for the first set here and see how that works. So then we go ahead and get it touch the screen to get our focus lock and then we're going to hit the shutter and see what happens. We got seven of our 12 shots, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12. And then it's going to process them all into a single image. And we'll see how it turns out, how good of a job it does at long exposure without an ND filter. Because if it can do that, that's extremely impressive. Because I love to do daytime long exposure and it'd be great to not have to carry uh, an ND filter set and rings and all that stuff with me every time I want to do daytime long exposure photography So it's still processing So it is taking a little bit, but that's understandable we did 12 images All right, so where did all the images go? The app like hiccuped. It's showing me the images down here in the thumbnail corner, but when I click on the gallery, it's not showing them to me. And it says failed here. Oh, well, that sucks. Okay, so maybe we should try going with a smaller amount first. Let's do six and see how that works. All right, so we're going to try it again. We'll get our focus lock. And we'll try six exposures and see how that works. Now I should let you know I'm currently using a beta version of their app. I wasn't last week, but I am this week because they gave me the option to test out their panorama feature, which is still in beta. So, you know, the, the app crashing on me like that, that could be uh, expected, being it's this version of the app that I'm running is a beta so I'm not going to knock that but it said it finished this time so but I'm still not seeing the final image oh, okay it's still processing it so you can see it there you can see the little dot showing that it's still processing the final stacked image so it's not quite done yet it's still working on it I'm just curious as to whether or not it can actually get the water as smooth as glass like using a real ND filter would do and doing like a 30 second ex uh, long exposure would. I'm just kind of leery about how well this is going to actually work. I mean, don't get me wrong, it'd be great if it does work, but I'm just not sure how well it's going to work. Okay, so it says it's done processing, but... I don't know, the water doesn't look all that calm to me. I still see movement in the water. And it might be that six just isn't enough. 
um, exposures. Like, you know, you saw I tried to do 12 and it crapped out on me when it tried to do the processing for 12 images. But let's try giving 12 a shot again. Some reason this time it's stuck on the third exposure. Okay, now we're up to five. Seven. see if it successfully stitches them all together this time. Okay, so it is working on it. So as you can see, and it's kind of hard to tell on the app screen, the water did get considerably smoother with 12 exposures. So that is quite impressive. Now, I don't know how well it's going to work, and I apologize for the background noise. There's people going in and out with their boats. After all, it is a public area, so I apologize for that. Let's try, a, let's try doing a 20 frame exposure and see how that works. That'll really give it a test. So let's see how that does. Okay, we're up to 15 exposures, 16, 17, come on, 18, apparently that's a lot of work for it, 19, 20. It says it was successful. Okay, and it's still loading them up. We'll see how well this one turned out. And I apologize, it might be kind of hard to see in the app screen, but I'll show you the full-size copies of the photos back at my house um, on my computer when I'm done here, so you'll be able to see them in better detail. But let's just see how this one turned out. So the water is quite a bit smoother still. Not 100% perfect, but quite a bit smoother. So let's do one more test. And I know we're running a little bit long here with this test, but let's go all the way up to the max of 30 and see how she handles that. See if we can then get totally smooth water. And I'm thinking maybe 30 frames is supposed to be equivalent to 30 seconds on a bulb timer. So let's give that a shot. Okay. 
Okay, we're up to six. Ten exposures. And the water is moving quite a bit today because there's a bit of a breeze blowing. Twenty-six. All right. Bear with me. It's taking a little bit. I apologize, but I wanted you to see just exactly how it works for yourself. Okay, so there's thirty. Let's see if it successfully wraps up the shoot. Okay, it says it did. So now we're going to go into the gallery. And it's still processing the images, of course. Getting down to the last seven. Okay, that's almost done. Okay, it's done with the last one. And I am going to save this to my camera roll on my iPhone. And now let's pull it up and see just how it looks. So it doesn't look too bad. I'll pull it up on the computer at home and we'll check it out there. Um, so that'll wrap up my shoot here at Mayo Lake and we'll continue this at home to wrap up the video. Okay, so now that we're back here at the house, we have our images here and I don't know why it opened them up in kind of a jumbled order, but so as you can see here, this is the six exposure and you can see there's still quite a bit of roughness in the water and you can see there was a person sitting over here that you can make out. They're a little bit blurry. Um, and then this was the 12 second. The person is just about gone. Uh, but the water still got some roughness to it. Uh, this was a 20 second. The water is a little bit smoother. And the person is completely gone over here. And then this is the 30 second. So as you can see, it's not 100% perfect it looks like they need to, need to do a little bit more tweaking in the algorithm because if i did this as a 30 second long exposure with a good neutral density filter i could get this water as smooth as a sheet of glass and in this um 30 second exposure equivalent stacked exposure you can still see a little bit of movement lines in the water uh, now, as I said, there was a little bit of a breeze blowing today, but I've done 30 second long exposures of bodies of water on windy days, even with a fairly strong wind. And at 30 seconds with the right ND filter, I can make it look, you know, I can make the water look like ice or a sheet of glass with absolutely no issues. So it does a fair job of allowing you to do daytime long exposures um, it's not 100% perfect, but it does do a halfway decent job. And yes, it would be a heck of a lot more convenient than 
taking a full set of ND filters with you, you know, your ND filter kit, which you have to carry in a separate bag, and then you got all the filters, and you got the filter mount system, and the step-up rings, or whatever other type of stuff you have to use, whatever hardware you have to use in order to mount the ND filters on the end of your lens. So this would definitely be a heck of a lot more convenient. And maybe if I had taken a little more time and tweaked things, uh, my aperture a little bit more, maybe I could have gotten it a little bit better. I don't know. Um, I had the aperture on the lens set at f4. Uh, maybe I could have manually set it at like f16. I don't know if it would have really made any difference. It would have cut down the amount of light getting in, but I didn't have overpowering light. The key thing is here would be to remove the motion in the water. Now, it would be interesting to see how well this would do at shooting a daytime long exposure of a waterfall and see how if it could make that misty cotton candy effect of the waterfall. Unfortunately, I don't know of any waterfalls that are close to me where I live in Roxboro in Person County, North Carolina. Uh, if you are from North Carolina, you know of a great waterfall that's not too far from me. Uh, feel free to leave a comment down below in this uh, video. Uh, below this video and let me know. I would greatly appreciate it. So it's not the worst way to do a long exposure. It's not 100% perfect, but uh, definitely a lot more convenient than carrying the ND filter system with you everywhere you go. And the arsenal is a heck of a lot smaller, more compact, and can more easily fit in your camera bag. So as you can see from the still photos that I got today, at about 30 frame, a 30 frame stack, you can get a pretty decent long exposure, daytime long exposure without any ND filters. And it does make the water almost perfectly still, not quite, but very, very close. And I think they could tweak their software a little bit more to get it absolutely perfect. Again, I would love to try it with a waterfall, but I don't know of any that are close to my house where we live now. Um, now, if you were paying attention in my video, you would have noticed that today I was using a different ball head on my tripod. That's because today I did finally receive my Platyball Elite tripod ball head, and I will be doing a review on that in the next couple of weeks. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel for when that video comes out, because that one's going to be a great one. I can tell you that now. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Please remember to subscribe to the channel like the video, comment on it, share it out on social media, and I will see you all next time.